Good morning, everybody. This is a live emergency update as it looks like the second season is about to ramp up. We've got a large slight risk that includes Oklahoma City all the way up to Kansas City. And uh, this is all going to be caused by a mega trough ejection that you can see right here. And it's not the perfectly shaped trough. It's got a lot of the flow on the east side of the trough, but it definitely is trending toward having a lot more flow on the back side when this trough ejects. And uh, I do think that we are gonna have an uptick in severe weather through the first week of November. So it definitely looks like the tropics are starting to phase out finally. And I do think that starting with this Tuesday night system, Tuesday night into Wednesday, I think that we are going to have a major threat of severe weather and the moisture return is well on the way into Oklahoma right now. So uh, wildfire damage seems to, uh, wildfire threat appears to be ramping up as well. Uh, critical wildfire here uh, throughout Oklahoma, western Oklahoma into the Texas Panhandle. And all of that is because the moisture transport is well on the way. And here you can see this megatroph ejection. And, and as I mentioned, a lot of that flow is located on the east side of the trough instead of the back side of the trough. And usually, that will lead to a less favorable outcome for severe weather. But the models have been trending toward having a lot more flow on the back side of the trough as well. So it's still going to be deepening a bit. It's gaining a bit more of that neutral tilt when it comes out of the Mountain West. But usually you want a lot more flow on the back side of a trough for it to amplify. And then that strong flow will shift around the base of the trough, wrap around the east side. And if that happens right when it ejects from the Mountain West, that's when you get the most significant tornado events across Tornado Alley. But in this case, even though you have a lot of flow here on the east side, you still have enough on the back side to give it a little kick when it ejects. And this is the Tuesday night configuration. And I think that the severe weather with this initial trough is going to maximize on Wednesday evening. And you can definitely see a trough axis here where it gets just a little bit of a, a neutral, if not even a negative tilt. And that brings a lot of the stronger flow here across the southern plains. Anytime you get a large scale trough like this, it's going to lead to massive southerly flow out of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, this low level jet will, will serve a couple of different roles. First of all, it transports moisture north or from the Gulf of Mexico, heat and moisture. That's uh, critical for these severe weather systems to happen. And secondly, it provides low level wind shear necessary for tornadoes. So if you get supercell storms within this environment of strong low level wind shear, that'll tighten up the mesocyclones at the low levels and you'll get tornadoes. And in this case, we have a triple point that's going to be moving through southern Kansas. And to the south of that, we're going to have a dry line very dry teens dew point surging out of the Texas Panhandle into western Oklahoma into that deeper moisture and that's going to create some serious problems and we are looking at the global model we'll head over to the NAM let's see if we have any changes in shape at least in the low level jet I'm not seeing many differences between the NAM model and the GFS in terms of its upper level trough shape so we will use the NAM model to drill a little bit deeper and look and see where some of our relevant features are going to set up so look at here at the low levels, and I'm sorry, I am a little bit under the weather. I've been doing all of these events recently, and it caused my immune system to get shot, and that's why I'm a little bit under the weather, but I plan on defeating this sickness today. So today should be the last day that I do have this sickness. Uh, this is the second day that I think that I've had it. I thought it was allergies yesterday, but what can you do? Here is the dry line. That is your low level shear. And that's a low level jet feature. A lot of times if you wake up the morning before a big tornado outbreak here in the Southern Plains, you see those low clouds just racing south to north pretty rapidly. That uh, usually means that you're gonna get some big severe weather and looking at the dew points, look at that dry line. And you can tighten it up a little bit when you look at the high resolution convective allowing models. Here is your dry line punching east into western Oklahoma, and you have a slug of very low dew points dropping into the teens. That's going to be associated with big time wildfire danger in the Texas Panhandle moving into western Oklahoma. And the models are hinting at a secondary triple point developing near the Kansas Oklahoma border, and uh, that could enhance that low level wind shear just a little bit. And uh, anywhere along to the east and to the south of that triple point, I think that's where the tornado threat's going to maximize. Definitely kind of a 
a, 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 a scary thing is this deep moisture. You've got like upper 60s dew points to near 70. That is big time moisture here. There were some concerns with moisture as to just how significant this is gonna go. But this is your main cold front. Dry line off to the south of it. A bit of a triple point here that moves through Kansas, Oklahoma border. The global models have that triple point a little further north and you kind of have a double barrel triple point here being indicated by the NAM model which uh, could cause some enhanced low level wind shear. We'll now look at the zero to three kilometer energy helicity index. And this is kind of a great way to visualize your warm sector, the shape of the warm sector and the presence of low level wind shear. And we have quite a bit of low level wind shear even along the cold front. Up into Eastern Kansas has some decent wind shear, but here to the south of it, that is where your low level jet's gonna start to intensify to the east of that dry line. With that slightly unfavorable upper level trough shape, the dry line tries to get this more southwest to northeast orientation, which usually would be just a little bit less favorable for supercells. But I also think that with the trough shape having these west southwesterly really upper level winds over this portion of the dry line, that supercells will have no problem moving off that dry line. And it also looks like you have a pretty favorable situation for tornadoes along the I-35 corridor, including Oklahoma City, all the way up to Kansas City, which could be at the nose, but it does look like that main severe weather threat is going to focus here across Oklahoma. And I'm here at Team Dominator headquarters where it feels a little bit dry, but that moisture is on the way. And that just is because ahead of that trough, you get windy conditions, still low relative humidity, but the moisture transports on the way from the Gulf of Mexico. But we still have one more day today of some big time wildfire potential and there is an ongoing fire down near the Wichita Mountain Wildlife Refuge out there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that today. Look out for those smoke plumes that could be rising across the western horizon, but a critical fire danger western into central Oklahoma today, Texas Panhandle, all of the, there's a lot of dry conditions out here. We're almost plunging into drought in the Southern Plains. So the, the Bermuda grass is dormant and we definitely need this moisture and the rainfall. The good news is at least we're about to begin about a week long pattern, seven to 10 day pattern of an abundance of rainfall across the Southern Plains. And I'm gonna be watching this area here for supercell development Wednesday evening. You're looking here Wednesday at about 7 p.m. And I think that this is where those supercells are going to develop. And you can definitely see the storm mode is a lot more isolated here with those supercells. Possibly could get an I-44 ripper that comes up southwest into central Oklahoma. But off to the northeast, eastern Kansas should be more of a squall line because your winds from the low levels up to the uh, upper levels are largely parallel to that advancing frontal boundary. And that's exactly what the convective allowing models are showing here. More of a squall line moving into eastern Kansas, southern Iowa, northern Missouri. But then your a triple point happens here near the Kansas-Oklahoma border and anywhere to the south of that. I'm expecting more isolated supercell development, western into central Oklahoma, possibly advancing to a, a pre-dry line convergent zone near the I-35 corridor that the three kilometer NAM is starting to hint at. That could certainly happen and we'll look back over to the regular NAM and even the regular NAM is showing this front to be a bit more north-south into eastern Kansas that could lead to a more supercellular storm mode as well even along that cold frontal boundary moving into eastern Kansas and also extending to the south of uh, the triple point down into western into central Oklahoma that could certainly happen as well you're looking at the regular NAM here but definitely seeing major moisture return and look at the dew points dropping back into the teens back behind it. There's your dry line, uh, at least as depicted by the NAM. And it shows your triple point near the Kansas-Oklahoma border, of course, as well. So that's why we have this large slight risk area by the Storm Prediction Center. I wouldn't be surprised if it's even upgraded a little bit beyond from that as well. But uh, we got a large slight risk by the Storm Prediction Center. There's your trough. It was a little bit east side loaded, but it's gaining more in the way of amplitude, uh, more trough amplitude. I think that as we see uh, more amplitude in that trough, we'll probably see an uptick in severe weather. So uh, we never like to use that word uptick, but it happens a lot. Here is your cold front surging south through the plains. 
temperatures fall back behind it. You get a little bit of a rise in the dew point sometimes behind these cold fronts. And then your triple point and your dry line extending off to the south of that. And this is the first of a series of troughs. So it, it looks like around November 3rd, 4th, and 5th, another trough is going to be coming in as well. So definitely marking the beginning of the second season of severe weather. And you can definitely see where that triple point is going to set up right here in northern Oklahoma to southern Kansas. I'm a little bit surprised that the winds east of that dry line aren't more backed even. Uh, but I think a lot of those convective allowing models are going to start to show these surface winds, show more of a southeast to northwest direction, so more backing to the east of that dry line that's going to push near the I-35 corridor. Could have a bit of a double dry line structure with the main dry line back here into western Oklahoma, a little bit of a ribbon of some southwesterlies, and then a convergent zone that holds steady near the I-35 corridor. So. This morning here at Team Dominator headquarters, I woke up with a sniffle, but dry conditions happening out here, wildfire potential today, and uh, then we're going to see the arrival of that moisture return tomorrow. You'll probably wake up tomorrow, there'll be some clouds, be some uh, moisture about. Uh, here's that low-level jet tomorrow morning, showing you that strong surface low starting to set up across northeastern Colorado, classic Colorado low up there, northeastern Colorado tomorrow, and this is your low-level jet crucial for transporting that moisture northward here across the southern plains and there is a marginal risk for tomorrow night tomorrow evening for severe weather and it looks like by tuesday evening we'll already have dew points rising up through the 60s here in southern oklahoma there's your dry line that sets up into the texas panhandle moving into western kansas dew points ahead of that up into the 50s already tomorrow so the moisture is going to arrive by Tuesday evening. Tuesday night could have some pretty big severe weather as well. And uh, then watch the moisture from Tuesday evening into Wednesday evening. Ramps up into the upper 60s near 70. Definitely showing you where that triple point might set up as well. And it definitely looks like a hint at a main dry line pushing east to near uh, the I-35 corridor. Let me show you what the global model is showing. Uh, even the GFS model when you get an uptick in the uh, severe weather parameters. This shows your triple point a little bit further north. That's gonna be up near the Wichita area. That's where it shows your triple point setting up there, folks. Little surface slow right here near the Wichita area. Due north-south dry line pushing east to the I-35 corridor by about zero Z. And uh, then you've got that front pushing through eastern Kansas. That's gonna have more of a squall line type of a scenario on it. That's because your upper level winds, your low level winds are all located para or oriented parallel to that cold front, which is oriented southwest to northeast. Anytime your winds are located parallel to a frontal boundary like that, you'll likely have more of a four squall line. But off to the south of that triple point in southern Kansas, you have a dry line. Dew points drop into the teens and to the 20s back behind it from the Texas Panhandle into western Oklahoma. And then your cold front coming in back behind that as well. So... Fairly textbook setup here. We could look at a forecast sounding by the GFS model. It seems to have those favorable photographs, favorable curved photographs, has this little area of negative helicity there. Sometimes will be present. But one thing I'm seeing in the global models and especially the NAM is this dry slot that comes in. That's your elevated mix layer. We call that an EML there, folks. And uh, that gives you the very important dry over moist configuration that leads to big severe weather and tornado potential that comes off the Mexico Plateau. That's why when you're chasing supercell storms, here's your hook-shaped photograph, just shaped like a, a hook, meat hook up there. east northeasterly storm motion at about 35 to 40 knots, long storm relative inflow vectors at least below a kilometer. And uh, your NAM model has some even more favorable photographs. And I think that's because of a slightly stronger low-level jet across eastern Oklahoma. Even though it's kind of the tail end ribbon of the low-level jet, you pick a uh, forecast sounding up here just to the east of that triple point near the Oklahoma-Kansas border, and you get your dreaded PDS sounding. And look at that hump as well on the low-level jet. That's a 45-knot south-southwest to north-northeast low-level jet there. That's your one-kilometer wind just above the ground. That's your vector right there, folks. That hump on that low-level jet is crucial because that creates a lot of strong low-level wind shear. See that little hump on the low-level jet? Minimizes the likely 
non-existent impact of that negative storm elder felicity up there in the photograph but this is a sign of a favorable shear profile in your warm sector for tornado potential and look at that clear slot elevated mix layer right there sure what's going on with my epic pen it's freaking out a little bit whoa my epic pen is freezing folks My Epic Pen is freezing. Possible the whole computer is shutting down here. Trying desperately to shut down the Epic Pen. Test, test, are we still alive? Shut down the Epic Pen. Only six frames per second right now, folks. Getting pumped out on this live. It could be due to the internet down here. Probably having some issues with the internet. Are we still live? Yeah, the epic pen is not very epic. Hopefully we are here. Barely hang on, everybody. Yes, 